Welcome, everyone. We want to thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us. Come on, let's get to the root of it. In these times that we live, we take strides to move forward. We strive to be more, stay strong and be focused. Start a while, we make choices, live or die. Take over, start set the root, and the truth may be hard to swallow. Step one, self-love above anything else in life. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I don't know why my mic just went mute, but thank you for tuning in to At The Root Of It. My name is Shannon, and we are kicking off Black History Month. So aren't you excited? I know I'm excited. I'm, I'm so ready to see what is in the mix for the month of February, because we're gonna do some honoring of some people and some talents that we have as a black people, as the black people. We, we have so many talents and gifts and stuff. And so I, I get really excited when we get to highlight it and not feel bad about it. You know what I'm saying what I mean? But kicking off the first show for Black History Month is um, a, a, a candidate running for city council district nine. And it's like, wow, y'all, like I'm so excited for this to be happening tonight, especially during this month. It just came right on time. You know, like if you don't believe in God, I don't know about you, but this had to be a God thing. Plus you got to know people who know people, but I want to introduce to some and um oh goodness, what's the what's the phrase again? I want to present to others and introduce to some our candidate running for District 9 City Council, Cameron Stowers. So I need y'all to give me some hearts, give me some hearts. And while we're giving some hearts, I want you to share this broadcast. Share it, okay? Share, share, share. So we're gonna bring them in. Yay! Hello, hello, hello. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. My sister D said good evening. How you doing, D? You, you know I was gonna talk and, a little um, noise. You mispronounced my last name. It's Stowers. You say stores, but listen, I've been oh. here my whole life. But I'm here. That's all that matters. I'm here. Cameron <laughs> Stowers. Okay, That's I, it. I got not gonna get that wrong ever, never again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to start off by um how this even came about. So right. I don't know last Sunday or the Sunday before last, um, mm. you had written a post saying any local podcasts yes. and Sierra Bond, KK compliments, Sierra side, she wow. put at the root of it. Right. And I, I, you know, I hearted it, but I didn't think anything of it. And then I got a, uh, um, a messenger message from him that night. And I was like, yes! Like, oh my goodness, I, I just felt honored that he chose me because I saw there was other podcasts on right. there, right. right? So then, you know, I asked how, um, how you know, what made him choose at the root of it, and he said because he trusts Sierra's judgment. Right. So for you know, character is everything. You understand what I mean? And so I just want to give a big shout out if y'all can um, share this to Sierra's page and let her so that she can see that she's getting she gets her flowers all the time from me. I always give her her props, especially when she has helped me so much, you know? So, um, she said, that's all that matters in the house. Yes. <laughs> so share, 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 get people up on here. So, um, when me and Cameron first had our very first conversation, it was like, we've known each other for a long time. The conversation just went very smoothly and it, you know, 
it was it was a very comfortable um, conversation. And one of the things that I really liked about speaking with him was that he showed me that he was a real person and that he wasn't just um, a politics head. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't just um, about politics, but that he was an actual person who cared about his community and who wants to see change in this community. So, you know, this is where we're, this is how we're coming tonight to show y'all that there's people out there who want to assist you in your district, in your community, that also understands what you're going through and, and how and how everything is. You yeah. know, how can you help something if you don't understand it? You know, I don't I don't get it. You know? So tell us a little bit about yourself, Cameron. So I was born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. We know we call it Duval County, but you know, I got to say that because I know you got subscribers and stuff like that that's outside of Jacksonville. So I was raised on the east side originally. And if you're from Jacksonville, you call that out east. And a lot of people are going to laugh when they hear somebody like myself say that, but that's what we call it. So I was raised on that side of town. Um, I actually went to elementary school on that side of town. I went to elementary school on the south side as well, Lake Lucina uh, off of Merrill Road. I went to middle school, went three different middle schools, a charter school. I went to Matthew Gilbert, which is also on the east side of town. And I also went to school again on the south side in San Marco at Landon Middle School. And from there, I spent a little time at Andrew Jackson, which was my home school where my family graduated from. And I realized this wasn't a best fit for me if I didn't you know, want to end up a product of my environment. So I ended up going to Inglewood High School. That's where I graduated from, which was the best decision I by far made in my young adult life. Right. Oh, so and, and I'm sorry. That was just my super brief intro. But as of today, I'm a firefighter. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a real estate owner, real estate investor. I actually house about 15 families um, through my real estate portfolio, um, rather it's Section 8 uh, families. And that program also house people on two different other state funded programs. One program is called the reentry program where brothers coming out of incarceration um, can get a new chance. They come and rent a room out in one of my homes. All my homes are brand new mobile homes, 2000 from 18, 19, 20, 21. Everything's brand new. So they rent a room out from me because we all know if you have a felony, you probably not get an apartment and you're they not. probably have credit. So I also house young adults aging out of foster care when they turn 18. So when you turn 18, the state pays me for you to rent a room out in my house for room and board, as long as you go to work or go to school. So that way they aren't being thrown out to the wolves and thrown out to the world saying, okay, that's it. You're 18 now. So I do a lot of good in the community um, outside of being a firefighter. So I'm just trying to get back on another level and it's time for change. And I've seen things that need to be changed. And I know that it's possible from somebody in our own community. I absolutely love, love, love laugh. Now that is something that I didn't know. Right. But I absolutely love what you're doing that is so yeah. awesome cameron oh my goodness you're really the people for the people dog. That's, it. that's it i mean I, I i say all the time what's good for us has to be done by us you can't have somebody who's not in your community try to represent your community it doesn't work like that i don't care where you're at you can't have somebody that doesn't live eat and breathe your community if we don't hit the same pothole coming home from work you can't represent my community Right, right. And that's so funny that he said that, right? Because during our conversation, we know that there's this, because I, I drive a taxi, right? And so um, I'm around, you know, I'm driving around and I actually drive in his district. So well, when- Okay, uh-huh, I'm following. I drive on the, on the northwest side and the, on the west side over there by Roosevelt Lane, Lennox, all of it, you know, so I drive mm -hmm. all around there. And um, we was talking about this one bump on Moncrete. <laughs> Everybody I knows. Switched, I said, well, what you gonna do about this, uh, <laughs> this train track that'll have right. you airborne if right, you right. ain't careful, right? Yeah. But just know 
that he understood he laughed so hard he was and, and because he lived there he yeah. knows right. exactly he said oh my goodness right there on the yes yeah and that i'm I, I telling you airborne <laughs> and we was talking about it because I actually have two properties around the corner, so I have to cross that. Man, I say you you gonna tell your transmission at the bottom of your car trying to cross there, and they know, they know where it's at that that um that road track that's on thirty six in Moncrief. They know exactly yes. where it's oh at. So that's that's not actually my district, but I can use it. Yes. <laughs> And then it got the nerve to have a light right after it, right? <laughs> so, yeah, they, you're going to fly straight through the light. So. Yeah, it's like, how, how, how are we even getting through it? So even with that, with that information, I felt more comfortable knowing that he knew exactly what I was talking right. about, right? Mm -hmm. And he, well, he was well aware of what is needed in his community. You right. understand what I mean? And that is like, that's what you need in the community. You need somebody that's in the community that sees what is needed. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, right? Mm -hmm. And these, you know, um, one of the questions was, let me get to it. Okay. Because I was about to change. I was about to share. Okay. So um why 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 now? Why well, did you choose now to run for city council? Right, right. So the, the actual seat was um being it's available twenty twenty three, but the bottom line is it's as simple as the word change. It's really just that simple. And I'm an action person. I'm an action. Everything in my life has been action, action, action. Rather, it's I don't like where I'm at in life. Hey, we need to change school system because I don't like it over here. I'm not learning the way I should learn. So I've learned action at a very young age. So today's time is like, listen, I'm looking at what's going on. I don't like it. It's so easy to complain about things, but nothing gets done. And we come accustomed to complaining and not doing action. So when I realized that, Things wasn't to my liking. It's time to put action into place and make a change. It's really just that simple. Um, it wasn't nothing, no strike of lightning that came to me. It was, I need to apply action to the situation at hand and make some change. Right. And like with the school districts out there, you, you mentioned mm -hmm. that you went to Andrew Jackson, which is right there on Main, right? Right. But you you decided to go, and that's dead sense in, in, in your community, right? Right. But you decided to go to Inglewood, which is on the south side. So explain to the people the differences in what you experienced in each school and why you see the need that there is there's a, a change that needs to happen in the school districts. Right. So um, my ninth and 10th grade, well, my ninth grade, I spent at Andrew Jackson. And naturally, it is really, really hard not to become a product of your environment. And I realize it's really, really hard to learn in a classroom of 30 kids and 28 of them are, are acting up. And essentially, out of 28 of them, at least 15 stay in my neighborhood. So I'm really not going to learn at this point. So with that being said, right. I really I have to change my environment to be able to change my situation. And if I change my situation, I can really hone in on my skills that I have and, and sharpen the tools that I have. So at that moment, I told my mom, listen, I need to go to Inglewood. Inglewood was a super diverse school. It was very, it, it was a lot of different coaches there. So it prepares you for the real world. At the same time, it gave me a lot of different opportunities that I can have in Inglewood that I didn't have in Andrew Jackson. So I made that decision and I was every bit of 13, 14, maybe made that decision. And it was amazing that I was able to recognize that at 13 or 14 at the time. Right. It shows where your mindset was in our actuality because if you can see it, that's like a model of ours. Like, if you can see it, then you can see it. You know what I mean? And you saw that had you stayed at Andrew Jackson. You can't hear me? We got you. We good to go now. I heard something. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. We good. Okay. 
I'm sorry. I'm like, what happened? But um, I just, oh man, what was I just saying? See, I told you I'd do that too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, listen, we'll, we'll pick up where I left off. So I, I realized at a very young age that it was a difference in the school system from the east side of town to the south side of town. And we're not talking about kids. We're talking about from the the actual energy of the teachers to the energy of the administration to the resources that the school had. I go to a south side school, they have a very strong PTA, a very strong booster club, sponsor club, and everything else. A lot of it, now we're the same county, but they have a lot of different opportunities. Go to south side school, they got wood shop, they got um, graphic design classes. We had cooking classes. We had sewing classes. None of that was in the school system on my side of town. And I noticed that at a very young age. And that's something that has to change. We have to provide opportunities to everybody within this city, no matter where they stay at or zip code. Right. And so, and, and me being originally from New York, those things were not separated per section of where you live it was mm -hmm. just available in the schools that we went to you mm -hmm. understand what I mean and you know one of the things is that we have to be mindful of how they're doing those school districts out there right. and you know I mean everybody deserves to have the same opportunities and allotted to them that other students may have. That's what brings social separation because certain kids are are privy to other things than, than other kids and it's not fair and it brings division. So how can you um, actually bring it together? I mean, you, it, it, you have your reaches, but for, you know, so right. far, right, right, right. but at the end of the day, what do what what do you think that you need to put in place if you were to be um, a city the city councilman of District Nine? What would you put in place for that? Like, what right. could you put in? Place? Because I right, don't right. know what so level of reach. We're gonna we're gonna start and say when I become city council district. If yes, it's right it, it it a problem, that's that's not a problem. That's not even in my vocabulary. So let's start okay. when. So one thing we have to do um, when I become city council, we need to um, let's go to these different schools, look at their resources, see can we bring these resources back to the neighborhood schools on different sides of town. And one of my issues on my platform is we need to get more trades inside of Duval County and options for trades, because let's be honest, everybody isn't made for college. I didn't go to college. I, I tried. I did a couple semesters, but being a firefighter is a trade. Now you can right. go to college and get a, a fire degree and, and being a firefighter, which is beautiful. I got a bachelor right. or associate degree, but being a firefighter is a trade, no different than a plumber, no different than doing hair, nails, um, HVAC, which make way more money <laughs> than a firefighter, being brutally honest. So I want to bring these trades to the schools that have, let's say, low college acceptance rates and give them other options. Because just because you're not going to college, that doesn't mean it's over for you or something like right. that. So we bring right. different trades. And that's one thing I want to bring and resources. Like I said, when I went to school on the south side of town, they had these trades, wood shop and things like that. We need to be able to bridge that gap and bring those on these different side of towns that have schools with low college acceptance rates. So that's, that's the first thing I'm gonna do because if you don't give the children options, then those children grow up to be adults with no options. And then at that point, how are they gonna feed their family? So if I give you a life skill that you can use with your two hands to feed your family, you're more prone to not be in the streets doing what you're not supposed to be doing, trying to feed your family if you get where I'm going with it. So right. let me give you a skill that you're gonna use to feed your family. You can, If you're a skilled plumber, you can go to work right now. It's 717 right now. You could charge somebody an extra $100 because they called you out after hours. The right. unplug and call it. And I know this. I own properties. I know how right. much they're going to charge me. So at that right. same time, that, that's, that's give these um, kids skills at a very young age that they can use to feed their families in the future. So that's one of the things that I will implement in the school system at a very young age.
my sister said, when you become city council. Yeah, you put an exclamation point on that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and she gave you some applause. Now I know because when I when I was in high school, right? Uh -huh. They um we had what was called a BOCES program, right? And when you went to BOCES, you were able to pick up trades. That's mm -hmm. where you went nurses aid or you know, um cosmetology, right. HVAC, things of that nature to prepare you for life. You know, right. that is what it is really supposed to do. So is you know, we gotta change the agenda of keeping mm -hmm. people that's already low lower by not giving them the tools to succeed. Right. And just to throw a little correction out there. Now we do have two schools that specialize in trades in Duval County, but every school should have the option for trades. Not just two, every school should have the option for trades. And that's what, even if it just was one class or one course or one school specializes in wood shop, one school specializes in HVAC, the other school specializes in, you know, plumbing. That way, if I'm 13, 14, you know what? Being a plumber is do make a lot of money. Mom, send me to school over here because I know I can get the proper technique, education, trade that I need over there because I made that decision at 13 to 14 that I need to go to a different school because I wasn't going to get what I needed here. And it's a lot more children are able to make that decision and we just have to give them the opportunity to. Right. You see, my sister said Mandarin High, where her son went, had different programs. But yes, D, that's the South Side. This is right. what this is right. what he's saying. Because mm -hmm. this Andrew Jackson is on Main Street, right there on yeah. the east side, you know, or west east. It's on the east side. Let's say on Main Street. That's the east side. All the kids from um mm -hmm. the east side go there. So it's the east side high right. school. And even Wolfson, Wolfson is the south side. So I know that Wolfson has it because they they um bring kids from all over Duval mm -hmm. County right. to go to Wolfson. So, you know, it's just that these kids need to have the same opportunities. So I like I like what you I like what you're saying and I I like how your mind is because we have to prepare our kids and mm -hmm. the, the the parents need to be more aware so that they can speak up as well. They, there's so many petitions where if you go to the courthouse, if you go to the DMV, if you go any place, there's people out there with petitions. Yeah. And they Listen, so I need some people to sign some petitions. <laughs> <laughs> That's some probably petitions. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but I signed them, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at any rate, you know, Maybe there's some petitions that these parents just to get yeah. together. And right. that's how you have a community of people who want their community to thrive, you know. Yeah. And um, I know that me as a parent, though, it, it was hard for me. I wasn't that um, scholastic parent, you know what I mean? I wasn't... Um, really big on it, but my daughter came out to become smart anyway. Right, right, right. To the fact that she had other things, like she was in, um, she was in culinary since okay. ninth grade. She went to culinary, and so she's a cook now. So mm -hmm. she learned is what's stemming her her adult life. She's twenty three now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, these things are needed. So what other um? What other issues are you running for? So we're also going to touch on a little crime and public safety. We're going to touch on affordable housing and we're going to touch on youth empowerment. And we already touched a little bit on education. So we're going to touch on youth empowerment, crime and public safety and affordable housing. So I'm very, very adamant about saying you have to select a candidate that is living what they're talking about. Right. So when we say I'm be very brief with it, because I know you got a lot more questions for me. So if we want to talk about affordable housing. That's something I do. I do this for a living, provide affordable housing. I don't have to raise my rent to, you know, fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred dollars. And I know that my residents can't afford that. I don't have to do that. I don't have to raise it to market price. I'm not these. these I treat them like they're my family, truthfully, because I appreciate them. 
just as much they appreciate me because without you guys, I wouldn't right. be able, I wouldn't have the funding to be able to run without you. Let's be brutally honest right. because you guys help me out just as much as I help you out. So I actually provide affordable housing. That was one of my issues that I have. I can't speak for nobody else, but I live what I'm actually talking about. And we say crime and public safety. I work as a, in a public safety field. I see it on a firsthand basis. So with me seeing it on a firsthand basis, I can see the issues at hand. I can see also see the solutions that we can use to fix those issues at hand. I actually live what I'm discussing. And when we say youth empowerment, we have to tap into the youth in middle school because when they get to high school, their mind already might be made up. They might be made up to go left and we really need them to go right. So that's really tapping to the youth at a very young age. Let's start with mentorships. Let's start with getting- I was just about to ask that. Huh? I was just about to ask that about mentorship because I know that when I lived down south in Fort Lauderdale, I was a mentor uh -huh. in, in middle school. And right. it really helped. We taught them um, um, etiquette, right. table etiquette. We taught them how to shop on a dime and, and to buy things. Like, it, it, was, it was a really great program. It was a really great mm -hmm. program. So yeah. I really, really, really um, am for the mentorship of middle schoolers because that's, you got to catch them before right. they go because in all actuality, these kids, these days and age is starting way sooner than even middle school. So right. if we could catch them in middle school, maybe we can reshape, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. So one of my biggest thing is, our, for instance, let's speak on the, the, the black male in our community because I am a black male. So what I want to do is I want to put more professional black males in front of these middle school black males so they can see what success look like because what happens is in our community they want to be ball players is because what 97 98 percent of the ball players look like them so they see opportunity because they can see it and if they see it they can believe it and if they believe it they feel like they can dream it right so that's put more black male professionals in front of our black children at a very young age so they can see what success looks like. You can have everything that ball player has, but this guy's a lawyer, right? We have to visualize what we want to be. No different than anything else we do in life. You wanted to be an astronaut, you know why? Because you've seen an astronaut. So that's right. why you wanted to do one. So it's the same thing, but that's, that's, that's literally keeping in front of them and let them know the opportunity is there and they have a choice. That's the beautiful thing about being an American. We have a choice. Life is made of choices. And actually you speak about middle school, the best thing I learned in middle school at Landon Middle was the choices we do today dictate our tomorrow. And we actually had to go in class every single day and write a positive choice we made today. You know how hard that is in eighth grade to do that? You know how hard right. it is to do as an adult, to write a positive right. choice you made today? It's really, really hard because you, we, we, we're, we make a million choices a day, and one of those choices can dictate tomorrow or the next 10, 20, 30 years. So we have to keep that in mind every, every day. It, it, it teaches you um, to think ahead, foresight, have foresight. Right. Like, think about the consequences before you do it. So it, you will have minimal mistakes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. forward thinking, like, okay, you know? Um, I was gonna say so oh, about the men being the forefront. I uh, love that concept. And it is because a male's voice and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take it to like in in a in a in a home, right? Mm -hmm. When you have a mother, right, and you're trying to tell your child to do something or not to do something, the child can either take it or leave it. Right, right, right. Like you might have back talk. You might have all of that. Yeah. They feel yeah. real comfortable, real froggy. Right, right, right. Until they end. Boy, what you say? Yeah. Nothing. In a in a whole nother room. <laughs> yeah. A man's voice can stop kids in their tracks. It doesn't matter, you know. And when you know that you are needed for these children because 
their fathers are not there. And women are trying to raise men. And mm -hmm. although I'm not knocking the women, the boy moms that, that got nothing but boys and built strong, independent men, I'm not saying that. But what mm -hmm. I am saying is that there is there is a need for the male voice to be heard in these children's ear gates so that they know, especially boys, you right. know, to be able to mold it and girls, not to just, you know, because girls need to understand that it starts from there. Respect. Men, you know, fathers is the ones who, who set that tone of respect. Respect yourself. You understand what I mean? And then you won't have so many women out there, or little girls out there looking for love in all the wrong places because you have somebody that's positive that wants to assist yeah. these kids. So, and yeah. I love it that it's men. Like, I even made my music for the show like a NBA live game because right. I, too, want to draw in men and not right. and because everybody wants to try to you know women will self heal they will look to heal but men no sometimes right. you got to pull their teeth to get them to oh yes that is right. something that i deal with so i wanted to pull them in and it's all of it maybe it's just a call for you guys to come to the forefront it's time all right. So, right. you know, it's funny when you speak about men healing, I, I'm a very, very, very big advocate of go to therapy. I'm a very big advocate of that. And a lot of times in our community, we feel like because you go to therapy, it has to be something wrong. Listen, the no. funny part about it, me and my therapist are talk. I just, I'm just trying to make sure I'm on the right road, on the right track. And I respect right. my therapist a lot because his first marriage, he was married for 21 years. And his second marriage, he's been married for like 30 plus years. So any hurdle, he's, he's 70 plus years old. He's been over a lot of hurdles. And he guided me or he actually said, OK, you're doing you're doing right. You're doing the right thing. Try it like this, though. Tweak it like this and you're going to get this response other than that. So I live my life in a very preventative way to keep from going down these roads and making mistakes. I'll just ask because somebody went down that road before. And I will say right. again, um, if you have you want to reassure yourself and making sure you're going to the right direction, try a therapist. If you unsure of something and you're having a lot of doubts and something like that, you need somebody to talk to, please try a therapist. If you work at a job and you got health benefits, it's free. Don't worry. It comes with your health benefits. Don't worry about costs. I believe you get either eight sessions or 12 sessions for free. Do go to it. And a lot of times in our community, we don't have a male role model who we can go to and get that very good advice. So we have to go outsource those, you know, that advice. And very, very big advocate, you know, um, for for therapy or even counseling, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. We do, too. We are here at, at the root of it. We promote therapy because we hit on some very deep topics that mm. may be triggering. So, you know, sometimes just speaking these things may not be the solution. Maybe you need to go and speak to somebody. So we promote therapy every Sunday because, That's good. That's good. We, you know, you can't be too proud to want to heal. You can't right. be too proud, right. you know, to, especially you talking to a complete stranger who don't know you. So and he's going to give you for your situation. highest opinion. He's outside of it. He's outside of your situation. So you can see it from a different vantage point. Right. And once you can get that different perspective, you can shift your mindset. Mm -hmm. You really can. So we're advocates as well right. for therapy. And therapy. Right. And, and whatever your situation is, I tell people all the time, you're not the first person that has ever came in the office with that, or you're not the last. That's what they're licensed and trained to do. No different than going to your doctor. When you go to your doctor and say, doc, I got this little bump up under my arm. Nine times out of 10, he's seen it a thousand times. They're going to give it antibody because he already knows what it is. It's probably a cyst or a boil. And he's going to say, right. okay, take this for seven days. It's no different than that. These are licensed, right. trained, you know, people. Right. Right. 
So, um, what else you got for me? How do you plan to involve residents in the decision making process in your district? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So, I'm very big on. Let's get the, I don't know what the community needs unless I ask the community. I can't represent the community if I don't know what they need. I say this all the time. I just represent you. You tell me what you need. I try to implement those things. So what we're going to do to get people involved, I'm going to have, I'm calling it a town hall meeting every quarter. So every quarter I'll go to a different location, rather it is a apartments, um, apartment complex, um, little room, little banquet hall, rather it is a library or um, any any place where I can possibly go. But we're going to go that once a quarter doing my campaign and when I'm actually elected once a quarter to talk to the people, see what some issues are. So we can put something in place for those issues. That way people feel involved because when you don't feel involved, that's when you start to complain. That's when you start to feel like he ain't doing nothing for us because we ain't seen them. They have to, you have right. to be, you have to be present. You have to show up. That's the bottom line. You have to show up and be present. You have to show up. You have to show up. That is the main thing because yep. you know, with politicians and this is why, to, to drive home that you are the people right for the people is because politicians just care about being seen and not making any change right. but that's just my opinion okay. everybody has one and that may not be everybody's agenda that's just my perspective that's all it is so you know but at the, in this, at the same time, I don't know if there's any changes because, like, how long have you been out of high school and these issues that <laughs> you see has right. been there for a minute, you know? So, listen, how long have you been out of high school? school a little over a decade. Um, I graduated high school in 2008. I'm 31. I turned 32 next month. So I've been out of high school a little while now, and a lot of these issues, some some issues have been fixed. They um they have provided some 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 trades at some schools like Buy Star start working in some schools in the banking system in the school system. Very appreciative of that. We needed that, but it's a lot further we can go. It's a lot more work we can get done. So that's definitely something I plan on implementing when I when I get in the office and when I get in the chair. Like right now. I um I drive and I pick up these students at Andrew Jackson. Mm -hmm. They're now working. I do the um they're the the seniors the seniors going to to the to the um the fourth graders and okay. I absolutely adore it because it gives me an opportunity to actually speak with the children of the community because I'm always in the cabs with the adults, but right. now I get to actually speak to the children to give them a little bit more, and they ride with me every single day, so right. I get to talk to them about stuff like you know, like one of them said, oh boy I gotta go to work, they go to work for two and a half hours <laughs> and I said, well they needed, they needed somebody to say something to them. So I said, well, if you think that's bad, it's going to get worse. They was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you the real. You're going to have to yeah. work. If you were complaining over two hours right now, how are you going to get through eight? Yeah. So you might as well buckle down. And they are, you know, they, the, the kids, I just adore them. And it's only been going on for a week. But mm -hmm. that's how quick form bonds with the people in that community. Because, and all you got to do is just talk to them. Just all ask. you got to do is just talk to them. One so, thing I said, um, we just ask the question, they'll tell us what's going on. Um, during my campaign, people literally come to me. If I mention anything about affordable housing, they're going to come to me and tell me what's going on in their own house, in their own community, rather it's my district or not. So we give people the opportunity to speak they're going to tell us exactly what's going on. We just have to provide that opportunity. Right. So in your district, mm -hmm. is, there, is it a crime area? 
Some areas are, some areas are, and we definitely are um, going to put a lot of boots on the ground in that in those areas. So one of the things I want to do in those areas is get more police involved in those areas and not when it's only a crime. Because naturally, when you only see somebody, when, when something negative happens, you automatically associate that person to negativity. So we right. want to get the, the police department, the fire department, all these resources in the community and not when something bad is happening. For instance, why not um, have the police department bring the horses to? Guess what? Everybody loves horses. Let's get some good PR in this community. Have the um, police department that's walk the streets. Let's do a community walk through the streets. Let's connect with the neighborhood churches because guess what? The churches have the biggest and the largest power in these communities come together with JSO, the fire department, and walk the streets. Because when you show a presence of if anywhere, people take notice. They take notice, right. and once you, you, your presence is everything. Presence is power. And once you show that, right. people take notice. So that's one of the things we want to do in those areas. That's good, because that's something that my, my pastor, you actually mentioned about um, churches with the police, because my pastor on, on the West side um, off 103rd, he's partnered up with the police department as well. And he does community feedings and things of that nature in that area. So it really does make a difference. It really, really does make a difference. I want to say um, the thing you said, politicians are concerned about their agenda only. Right. You know, right. And, right. and Cameron is not about his agenda. It's right. about the people. And so, you know what um, happens, sorry to cut you off. What happens with a lot of um, politicians, they're very concerned about their agenda because they're disconnected from the people. They don't know what you go through on a day to day basis. They don't know the speed bumps you hit on the raggedy road that's on two or three of your cars in your lifetime. They don't know what your, the, what your kids got to walk through to get home from the bus stop in your school. They don't know about as as simple as we can't go to this store because it was a lot of shootings at that store or it was a lot of drama or crime at that store we got to walk 10 blocks to get to the store when you're disconnected you should not be representing that community so you have to right. get somebody in the office that's connected in your district and connected in your community and a presence in your community the way i feel about it if you represent a community anybody should have access to you that's just the way I feel about it. Anybody should have access to you. And the difference is everybody has access to you on Facebook, but the people who you represent don't have access to you. I find it to be a problem. So uh, I take pride in carrying my own campaign phone. So if you text me or you call me, I'm the only one going to pick up. Now, I prefer for people to text because I can get back to a text message other than missed calls. I might have 30 missed calls, but I can sit in my bed and answer a text message to let you know I got it. Well, okay, we'll look into it. Call me at this time, or I'll call you at that time. So we have to implement those things. And the agenda isn't about me. I represent the people. Because guess what? I can't go back to my grandma's house on Thanksgiving. And she looked me dead in my eyes and said, you ain't doing right. What you doing? I can't do that. I can't do that. And I don't like being embarrassed. And I <laughs> embarrass my family. So it's a lot deeper than me. It's not about me. It's about representing the people. That's for our children. And that's for our grand. I, it's three generations myself, our children, and my grandparents that I have to represent on, on all different levels. So I have to know what's going on with the grandparents' side, with my own side, and with our children's side. So I take a lot of pride in it, and I take that to heart. That's a very holistic view of everything. My sister said, happy anniversary, BOT, our church's anniversary, 20 years. So just had to put that up right yeah, and then yeah. she said you must have a relationship with the people in your district and that, and that is what he's saying in reference to you know his people live in the same in that district so right. he can't go to thanksgiving he can't <laughs> eat no fried greens i can't i can't show up knowing that i ain't doing right it's not going to work it's not going to end well for me and believe right. me it's it, it's not i'm a, i'm gonna say it very simple I'm more concerned about my grandmother calling my personal phone saying, hey, what are you doing? Don't embarrass me. Doing? Don't, don't right. have the church people talking about me in church now. You better do right. I'm, I'm more concerned about that because nobody wants to let grandma down. So I take a lot of pride 
and I take it personal to be able to help the community like I am. Oh, we got a question from Nathaniel Sutter. He says, okay. how do you navigate the red tape that goes on with politics that may hold up your thoughts and wants for the community? Mm, that's right, a good right, right. question. So when we say red tape, a lot of that is actually probably a lot of it. Oh, it's, it's bottom line. It's red tape. So I believe, I'm a businessman at the end of the day. So I know I negotiate. And that's the bottom line. Hey, listen, can we have this? And we'll give you that. And we're not talking about something that's going to be as, as long as it's not hurting the people. Let's say that much because everything is negotiating. What can you give to what can you get? That's the bottom line. So if we're talking red tape, I'm a negotiator. Hey, listen, this is what we need. This is what I need from you. How can we make this happen? That, that's my line that I use on the table when I'm negotiating anything. I need it for this price. How can we make this happen? I need for this park to be redone, and we need new basketball goals. We need new hoops. How can we make this happen? That's the bottom line. We need this street fix. How can we make this happen? So if it is red tape, I'm going to negotiate through the red tape, and we're going to make it happen because a lot of times it's the point of people putting in that work. It's really just that simple. They take no for an answer. No doesn't exist in my vocabulary. So if you tell me right. no, I'm going to say, okay, you saying no right now. What is the answer going to be tomorrow? What is it going right. to be when I ask you in two more hours? What is it going to be next week? No is for right now in my life. So we're going to navigate through that red tape. No is not an option at all. And that is, that's, I like that answer because, you know, when you look at, when you look at even like the presidential election, right? Even though it's so many different factors that go into who actually um, wins or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But what they say on the campaign and then the fight that it takes right. to get those policies that they boosted during election time mm -hmm. into place, Right. It's a whole nother ball game. You know what I mean? That's I, and that's why I really like that question because right. it's like, you know, you say that you want to do this, but then once you get in there, do you have to clean up before you, <laughs> you know, you gotta right. clean up? What I miss? I gotta sing some some type of song. Right, right, right. Over again, but you know what I mean. I just um or. Because I don't know, like, again, tell me why. Wait, let me just say what this, say, show some um, comments. So okay. um, he said he gave the pound and the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Appreciate you. Dan Agreed. said effective communication. The thing you said, beautiful, great answer. I, I know that's probably a great answer. And Dan said, great answer. She has a question. She says, do you think there should be more policemen of color? So uh, they, they have a lot of systems in place and JSO, just like JFRD. Um, I, I'll give it to you straight because I'm a firefighter of color, African-American firefighter. Yes, there should be. But the problem of it is our children don't have access to be able to have the, uh, the resources to become one if they wanted to. So that's one of those trades that we need to implement in the school system, because if we have access to be a firefighter, more of our kids will be firefighters. Oh, we need to know. We need to have it in front of us to be able to do that. So we, we do have a lot of, of African-American and uh, we have a lot of diversity in the police department. That's that's say that for once, a lot of diversity. But we can have a lot more if we provide the, the resources in our community that they can actually do that. So what are the resources that we need? For this, for trades. Being a policeman is a trade. It's a trade. And we need those kind of resources in our school system so we can do that. But before we provide that resource, we have to build a good PR with the community. Because no one wants to be something that the people don't like or, or have a bad rapport with. So that's build that gap with the community. And then at that point, we can push the fire department, the police department, plumbing and everything else inside of the school system and inside of the education. And we can do that. And if we can't do it in the school system, that doesn't mean no is not an answer. Guess what? We'll push it on the weekends. 
We're going to have access right. to it no matter what. Rather, it's financial literacy classes. If we can't push that inside the school system, believe me, it's going to be at some community center at least two Saturdays out the month so you have access to it. I don't believe in excuses. I'm going to put it there. The plate is on the table. You can eat if you want to, but you will never say it wasn't no food. That's the bottom line. Right. We're going to have resources. We're going to have things in place so there's no excuses to be made. He said, thank you. You are. I think he said, public relations, yes. That's it. That's it. Good PR. So in the mm -hmm. fire department, I'm I'm very big in business. I'm a businessman. I was the fireman that went to every elementary school with the fire truck, with the kids, showing them, guess what? You look like me and I'm here. You can do this too. You know, don't matter if right. you don't look like me or not. You can do this too. I'm 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 not Superman. I'm not, I wasn't born into this or anything like that. It was something I worked my butt off and I did it just like anybody else. So I actually took children to um, Christmas shopping. We did a lot of reading to the kids in elementary school, reading to kids with special needs. So I'm very PR, like I'm heavy on that because we have to do that in the community. We owe it yes. to the community because without the community paying taxes, guess who don't get paid? Me, it's right. no different than my tenants. I take care of them because you take care of me. It's the same thing with the people. I carry that same energy over. Right. I know that I don't I, now. I'm I'm maybe showing my age because I'm gonna go back to the policing part. Okay. Um, especially policing the neighborhood. So back in the day, day in the 1900s, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we used to watch things like, um, oh man, Leave It to Beaver and stuff like that, right? So they used to have, and I, I may be saying my three sons and all of that, but they would have a policeman. And I may even be saying the wrong TV shows, but it's during that era, before that time, right? right. Okay? And they used to have policemen policing the neighborhood. So you will walk by and say, hey, Officer Bob, how you doing? How da, da, da. Right? Do you actually think that in this day and age that police could just stand on the corner and people be like, hey, Officer, blah, blah, blah? Do you think that in this day and age that that's right. even a feasible thought? I believe it is. I believe it is. Once again, no is not an answer. Everything is possible. We just have to put things in place to get to that point. It's not going to happen overnight, but we will put things in that place to get to that point. When I was a kid, we used to ask the police officer for lollipops. We did that. I did that in elementary school, and we can get back to that. We just have to develop a great PR in these communities so we can get to that point. It's really just as simple. And I say all the time, humans make life difficult. Life is very simple, and humans make life difficult. Make good decisions, you get a good outcome. Plan for the future, and you're better equipped to have a great future. So that's just put some things in place. That's um, have a, a level head with it. That's be firm, but that's be fair, and that's make that's make some change happen. That's right. Okay, so I really, I really um, look forward to. Um, seeing you campaign to see now do now explain the campaign process like what is the time frames in which and when does everybody have to vote and mm -hmm. and everything like that and when when we gonna when are we gonna see you and right. ask about what upcoming things do you have coming next okay so let's say first we have an actual a local election for the city council at large. That's not my election, but that is coming up on the 22nd of February on a Tuesday. Let's be sure to get out and vote for that. Vote for the candidate you feel like best serves your community. As far as my election, my election is March 21st, 2023. It is about a year and a month away from now, but that's going to fly by. As far as events that I have going on, let's just run it down. This month alone, um, tomorrow, I'm actually speaking at Inglewood High School to um, a group of young men in their mentorship program that they have there. I'll be there at uh, noon. And on the 19th of this month, we're actually going to one of the elders that stay in my district. We're going to do give our yard a makeover. So I have about 10 volunteers and we're going to go to her um, 
her yard. We're gonna give it a makeover, cut it, edge it, mow it, put down some mulch, plant some some flowers and stuff like that. And that's on the nineteenth. Yeah, some some curb appeal. Some curb appeal. Yeah, that's bring the property value up. So at that yes. on that Sunday, we'll be at the Claire White Mission. I actually teamed up with my barbershop, Hollywood Cuts mm -hmm. Barbershop, right there in Riverside. Um, in that fresh market plaza. I've been going to Brother for um, probably about seven, eight years. So we teamed up and we came to do a haircut give back at the Clear White Mission on February 20th, that Sunday. And at that moment, we're going to give back. We're going to cut every brother hair that shows up. We're going to cut their hair. Awesome. We have t-shirts that we're going to give away. They're, Clear White is already um, serving um, breakfast. But we'll be up there. Now, me going up there, I'm not a candidate going up there. I will be Cameron Stowers up there um, while we're giving away shirts and stuff like that. Um, that's just the protocol when it comes to politics and nonprofits. I have no affiliation to them. I have nothing. You know, they don't sponsor me. They don't do anything. I do not condone anything like that. But I will be up there as myself giving back to the people. I just wanted to put that out there. So what I did, how I got the shirts, I cleaned out my closet. We had to do some spring cleaning and found out that I had 72 shirts that I knew I wasn't going to wear. Yeah, it was bad. 72? So, yeah, I ended up having 72 shirts. So so what I did was I military rolled all the shirts up, and I never even been in the military, but I watched a good YouTube video that showed me how to get the most out of everything. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so I military rolled everything up, and I put, it, I put three shirts in the freezer bag. So as these brothers get their hair cut, I give them a bag with three shirts. Hey, what size you wear, brother? Extra large? Here's an extra large bag with some clean, fresh shirts to put on. So we have nice. that going on. Yeah, we have a lot going on. In March, we're going to do our first town hall. It's going to be our first town hall. We have a, a, a sister in that district. She's going to come and do some spoken word poetry. We have a, a pastor in that district who's going to come and pray over the town hall and bless the community. And at that time, I'll do a Q&A with the people of that community about what they want done and how we can work together to get that thing done. Yes. <laughs> he said 72. 72 shirts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand that. I don't even want to say how many shirts I have, so it's probably up there with you. Right. But um, um, we're getting close to time, Cameron, so do you want to leave any last words of of encouragement and and when to um oh I put it up there sorry oh, yeah. I don't know. oh yeah March March twenty first twenty twenty three Tuesday March twenty first twenty twenty three that'll actually be the election day and the funny part about it is that's the day before my birthday so you know when we take home the victory we're gonna have a sweet birthday and it's gonna be a good time. So one thing I want to do is during that time, everybody that supported during the campaign, you will be at my campaign party because of the fact I represent the people and the people are the reason why I'm here. And I want to involve them as much as possible. So I got a lot of volunteer opportunities coming up that we're going to have and in being involved in the community. A lot of times in our community, we want to be involved. We just don't have the resources to be involved. We don't know how to be involved. So I'm going to give it to you, like I said earlier. The food's on the table. You can eat if you want. But you're not going to say that we didn't have any food because all the resources are going to be there. So I definitely want to tell people change is coming, but I also need your help. I can't do it by myself. I also need your help. And us both, I represent you, and we can make it happen. Yes. So I'm going to share and keep sharing the show because it was very informative. I love the fact that Number one, your personal life um, and how you conduct yourself in your personal life shows where your heart is. Right. Um, and it's part to help. So I know, I, I pray that this really, um, really expands for you, even as far as your business practices, as well as your candidacy, that, that you win you know, I actually call um, my best friend's mom. She's my mama, too. And I asked, I said, hey, you in District 9? 
And she said, I think I am. I said, well, look at the show tonight. This is a candidate that's that's running for city council for your community. And she right. said, okay, I'm going to look at it. And I want her to look at it because I want her to see what what people have planned for the community. And if not, if she just talks to one or two people, that's one or two more people that mm-hmm. has Karen Stowers right. in the <laughs> right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. Stowers. Yeah. Cameron and actually Stowers. what you do is I'll, I'll, I'll give you my, my campaign phone number and you just give her my number. Actually, I'll put my phone number in the comment box. So that way, if anybody has questions, you can shoot me a text, you shoot me a question. And that's something we could talk about. If you're available to get coffee, let's go sit down and have coffee because I don't know what's going on without you telling me. So I say this all the time. We all have blind spots, right? And if I have a blind spot, I'll miss something because I didn't see it. So I need you to tell me where my blind spots are so I won't miss these things. We don't want to leave nothing. We don't leave nothing on the table. No issues will be left on the table. Yes. Well... I thank you so very much, yeah, Cameron, you, for jumpstarting our Black History Month uh, and our first show in the month. And I am very honored again that you have chosen to sit and talk to me. And we are we are one hundred percent supporters of you because I you. like your message. I like your um your heart for the community and I like what your plans are for the community as well and for the children of the community because now that I'm personally involved with some of them I really want them to be able to um get everything that they deserve to get to have a fruitful and prosperous life so I again Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, leave your information down in the comment box. And you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. For the people that's tuning in later, um, please share, share, share. If you know anyone that is in the District 9 area. And um, Cameron, let me know. Tell them the, the, the um, perimeters of District 9 so that so they know if they... Right, right, right. I just I'm actually typing into the comment box now my phone number and my Instagram and Facebook at sign so you can find me. So as far as District Nine, this is the easiest way I like to use landmarks because those are landmarks we all know. That start from EWC, which is now EWU, but some people know it as EWC. That start from there. That's that's literally shoot all the way down Roosevelt till we get to the base. And that's go down Blanding till we get to 295. Everything in between that is literally my district. Very long, very, very long district. We're talking from pretty much King's Road to 295, kind of, sort of. And what I'll do is I'll put the link as well. (laughs) It is. It is. And I'm going to put the link as well um, for the maps for District 9 so you'll be able to see District 9. They can follow the link, zoom in, find out their street, see where they're at so they can do it themselves. Okay. I'm very, thank you so very much. Well, until we meet again, you guys, same bad station, same bad time. Tune in next week because you never know what is going to be on next week. We will have, um, we're still celebrating Black History Month. So tune in throughout the week so that you know what we're going to be talking about next week. It's going to be fun. I'm going to keep it on lock until it's really time for it to be released. But just know it's going to be very, very fun. And it may have something to do with music. So all my music heads, tune in, tune in, and tune in. Cameron, thank Thank you you so much. I I thank you. you. Y'all be safe. Have a good night. Have a good night. And you guys, good night. Welcome, everyone. We want to thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us. Come on, let's get to the root of it. In these times that we live, we take strides to move forward. We strive to be more, stay strong and be focused. Start a while, we make choices, live or die. Take over, start set the root, and the truth may be hard to swallow. Step one, self-love above anything else in life.